Hey, hey, how's it going, subbies? It's me again. How you doing? Minecraft Guide episode number 100. Couple things before we start today's episode. The title says a thousand. Actually, technically speaking, it's more like 1,129 days. This episode is a world tour. We're gonna look at everything that we've done in this series up until this point, 1,129 days worth of work. There's an episode for everything. I'll pop numbers up on the screen like that right here when I show something. The numbers of the episodes, if you're curious, go back and check those out. There's a playlist that's on the end card. Finally, if you like what you see today, I would highly appreciate it if you subscribed. If you're already subscribed, Pog, you're cool. Maybe consider leaving a like. I've put a ton of time and work into this world, then doing those things would help YouTube know to send this tour video to other people so they can see this world too. Good news, if you change your mind later about subscribing or liking this video for whatever reason, uh, that's okay, because you could always just change it back. Like goal, 20k likes today, tea time, tour time. So, if we're gonna do a world tour, we might as well start where we started, which is this place right here, the Flower Forest Base. On day number one, I made a pickaxe. On day number two, I got a farm going, right here. This is our very first farm in the world. On day number three, this beauty, this monstrosity, this creature right here, was built. Uh, okay, just kidding. There's no way I kept track of everything. But it kind of started like that. Something like that. So this was the original starter house. This was like my favorite house in this world for like a long time. I still love this house. Like the kitchen right here with the vibes with the honeycomb up there. Impeccable. It can't be beat. Over here, we have an enchanting setup. And then up top, the very first storage building. <laughs> with, with actual items in it still. Oh, oh my gosh. Actually, a lot of items in it still. Yay, we're going to have to come back for this stuff. Like this is the loot. This is crazy. I didn't realize I had things over here still. The goal with this house was to build something interesting and cool, but also like achievable early game, which is what I went for, and it's what I achieved. I actually really, really like this house still. I would definitely build it again. I would probably build it bigger now, but it's pretty sweet. Back behind this house, we have something somewhat illegal going on. Right across the road from the starter house, though, something way more legal. A cow crusher farm. These cows live a terrible life, but really good food for me, which is pretty cool. This is how we did our food early game, and honestly, it's how we do our food now. But we don't do it from there, we do it over at the jungle base. Next to that cow farm, we have a road. This road is mostly finished, kind of. Um, I promise, okay? To be honest, I'm not sure why I did the path like this. I must have just done it like that, like all broken up and stuff. But if we follow the path, we go over here to a, a campsite. And then over here, we have these pods on the ground. If we go down into it, uh, we ride the water down to the bottom, step out of the water, and then boom, we're in a room. I really like this room too. I was really, really happy with the design. Now the room, it, it doesn't only look good, it actually functions. There's a zombie spawner in there. We're not gonna actually go in there, but zombies spawn, they go up an elevator, they fall, they land right there, you know how this stuff works. And then I put all the drops back here. I never use this thing though, because it's way back over at spawn. But I've gotta say, this thing was amazing to have over here at spawn while I was living at spawn. Super lucky find. I don't know if we've ever seen spawn from the sky, so here's what it looks like. From the sky, we have that building, that building, that farm, and then actually, uh, this little sweet berry thing, uh, that dock, and that's actually it for spawn. That's everything. This is where we started the series, first 20 episodes. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to say, there's a world download. If you're doing the download, these are the coordinates to this area right here. I'm probably going to leave, like, all of my tools, everything in the ender chest, inside of a chest, uh, at the, like, the storage cathedral in the jungle. So that's where that stuff will be. I'll show you the coordinates to that spot later. Yeah, so for spawn, that's it. Now we have to go back into the nether to find everything else because spawn is actually really, really isolated. I think the world spawn is like past this hill somewhere over there. I don't really remember anymore. But yeah, somewhere over there, this isn't exactly actually at spawn. Oh, there's a mountain over there with an ice farm on it. Forgot about that. All right, so if we go through this portal and go into the nether, we're actually put back in the overworld, believe it or not. Uh, just kidding. We're actually in the nether right now, but I did a theme. So every portal that we have, like a major portal in the nether, is in a hub. This hub is themed like the overworld, like a flower forest. It's like peaceful, the good vibes, terrible grass color, but you know, we, we did what we could do. Down here, we have a ladder. This ladder goes into a really hostile place. This is the nether. Uh, lots of things down here that don't really like me really good spawn though there's a warp forest over that way crimson forest nether waste garbage soul sand valley so like everything is here but there's nothing down there we're not gonna go down there so pretty much everything that we've done in the nether for the most part has either been on top of the nether or at the top of the nether right now in this nether hub we're at y113 like we're basically there the bedrock ceiling in that portal room it is the bedrock ceiling of the nether. If we go down that hallway, then we have a fence gate right there and no fence gate over here. We're actually gonna go down this fence gateway first to check out the rest of this hallway. All right, so the first fence gate has an ender pearl. If we go down this hallway right here, we're going to hit a hub 
that has uh, not really been worked on very much. It's like a tiny room. It goes to the stronghold, though, which is pretty cool. But there's nothing to see at the stronghold. I haven't done anything over there yet, so we're just gonna skip that. Down the super long hallway, kind of trippy to ride, we have this area right here, which is way more finished. So this area is another hub. We have an enchanting setup, spawn-proof area in here. Things don't spawn. And then if we go down this ladder, which is really long, but completely finished, eventually we're gonna find this right here, an opening to the nether. That's cool. But we're gonna skip that and keep going down into this room right here. This farm was like my number one XP farm for like the longest time. It's not anymore because I have a gold farm, but it's a blaze farm. This blaze farm is amazing. It's safe. It's blaze rods, it's experience, easy, quick. The only con is that it's like really far away. It's a cool farm. I actually really love this blaze farm. I love the glass everywhere with the lava, but I like never come here anymore because the main reason I would come here is the experience. And like I said, gold farm is kind of better. If we go back up the ladder though and stand on this platform, the spawner will actually be active. So then blaze can spawn and then the blaze are gonna be pushed all the way down there to the bottom and then I take them out down there. Then when I want more blaze to spawn, I come back up here. Eventually I plan on coming back over to the blaze spawner and then other foresters buy it and setting up a wither skeleton farm. But I don't know when that's gonna happen. E eventually, one day, hopefully. So, back in the top part of this blaze hub, we jump in the boat, turn around, and go all the way back to the main nether hub. Now, this hallway is really, really long. This whole hallway is built out of blue ice, like blue ice on the ground, glass bins on the sides, fence gates at intersections. Yeah, this is like the main hallway in the nether hub. There's another one, though. This right here is the main nether hub. I love this place. I am so happy with how this thing ended up. So, uh, right now, we have a secret... It's not right there. It's not right there. You saw nothing. So, right now, we have a secret room behind here, right there, with a basalt generator. It's not much, but it's honest work. And then, uh, we have a circular room, completely spawn proof because of glass and lighting and buttons and everything like that. A load zone right here for finding our way back over here. Respawn anchor on the other side. Dripping blocks on the corner. They look so cool. And it's a circle. And a four-way portal right there. And then another hall going out this way. Hey, what are you doing to my boat? My boy? My boy? Get out of the boat. Out of the boat. Over here is a relatively new machine. It's a bartering machine. It's really cool. It's fully automatic. Super simple to use. So load the thing up. You climb up here. You stand. The piglins do the gold thing. Give you a bunch of loot. Then I manually move everything over here. This is everything that I get from this farm. Overall, this is an insanely functional farm and a great way to get rid of a bunch of gold that you probably don't need. I uh, highly recommend building one of these things. I honestly might even build a bigger one soon because this thing is just so good absolute unit all right so we have two options we could go up or we could go down this boat let's go down the boat first because this way is way less exciting so we have another hallway this time it's not blue ice it's just packed ice we go down the hallway and then uh there's an opening right there that goes over to the ice spikes biome we don't really need to go there though there's nothing there over here boom another hub this is the desert hub this is the desert that i go to to get resources from not much is really in the desert, so we're not going to actually... Yay, we're going to go there. We're going to go there. It's a tour. All right, middle of the night, of course. But look at my campsite and a banner and the vibes. Desert vibes, for sure. And a bunch of hostile creatures, so we're going to leave. But yeah, it's a desert by a frozen ocean. Packed ice, sand. What could be better? Oh, yeah, and I think I spawn-proofed this hub, too. I, I think, maybe. Like, the light level might be super bright everywhere, but that's that. That's this hub. Back to the main one. Quick second later, and we're back over at the nether hub by the bartering hall. We're gonna go up this ladder, because up this ladder is like the best farm in this entire world. It's really good. So, we're up on top of the nether now. If I want to go to the mesa biome, I fly that way to those coordinates right there. Or, if I want to go to the gold farm, I either fly up this way, or climb that scaffolding. This thing is built all the way up, like as high as we can build in the nether. And it's amazing! And it's great! And it's, like I said, my best farm by far. So, it's a gold farm. To get inside of the thing, we jump right here. I would get a piglin mad. They all come rushing over here. Matter of fact, check this out. Uh, I'm sorry, my boy. They get angry. I stand right here in this spot, and they all come running over here. And it gets really loud, but I get a ton of experience and an absurd amount of gold, too. Now, down below this thing, we have an auto sorter hooked up. This is everything that you get from the thing. I usually, uh, excuse me, I, I usually just despawn the sores, but I could smelt them up, too. And yeah, it's basically just a basic room for the gold farm. I try to get a little bit of everything in here, basically everything that I would need whenever I'm using the gold farm, including a lodestone compass in case I lose my way back, respawn anchor, you know, all of that kind of stuff. This thing is super safe, actually, unless you go out there, like on the outside, and it's really good. Favorite farm in the world. It's also massive, uh, entirely built out of magma blocks, like for the spawning rings, a bunch of crimson slabs on top of the thing, 
glass, quartz. Yeah, it was really, really expensive. Like a huge grind to build, but absolutely worth it. Like 1000%. Now inside of these portals, uh, if we go down here, we have a ladder that actually goes to another nether build that I did. I think it's the last nether build actually. All right, so down here, we go down into the open nether. I still have to build like a tunnel or something. Then we have another ladder. If we go down this ladder right here, we actually end up in something that I call the Strider Bay. I don't really come here very much, but it's where I have my striders waiting. They sit in the lava outside, and then whenever I need to go somewhere, I can just take the striders and, and go wherever I need to go. Then uh, over here, I have my new ancient debris mine. Haven't been down there in a while either. We're going to have to go down there soon, though, because we need to upgrade like more of our tools. Most of our stuff is netherite, but some of it isn't. If you go out this door, oh yeah, something happened to that door. I never fixed it. But if you go out this door, you can see the building a little bit better. The building's pretty sweet, in my opinion. It's kind of like like a little house in the nether, and then the striders out front of it. It's pretty cool. I like it. Honestly, I would actually like consider, highly consider, just importing striders to the overworld and literally one by one, like like exactly recreating this build, because I seriously love it. Like with the basalt roof and the blackstone and and everything. Oh, the creepiness. It's like maxed out on the build. It's so cool. All right, picture this. You're in this world right now, but not right now. You're in the nether hub. You find those four portals in the center. You go to the west one because, of course, west is best. You go through the portals, and then boom, immediately you are a pigman, and you're confused. But then you he, then then you see a cat, and, and then you realize how humid it is. And where are you? Oh, you're in the middle of the jungle base. This is our main base. This is what we've been working on in this world since episode number 20. I love this place. I'm obsessed with it, and I never want to leave it. This is my favorite base, like no joke, that I have ever built. My favorite builds that I've ever built are in this world. They're all here. So this part of the tour is maybe a little bit more familiar for you if you watch the series, but uh, we're still going to check it out. I'm going to try and go as quick as possible, though, because there's a lot here, like a lot. So we found this jungle before episode 20 and I thought it was sweet. I decided that I wanted to move here after we took out the dragon. So we took out the dragon and we moved here. This house right here is the jungle starter house. I love this building even more than the starter house. Inside of the building, we have a bunch of pets. I got some of the names right. Some of the names are just new names. And yeah, it's the starter house. We have an enchanting area over here, level 30. We have a cooking area over here where I always cook the food and then all of my food right there, actually. And then this was actually the old storage room. Storage room number two, but it's not anymore. There are still some other like random things sitting around in this house, like music disc and just random things in here. I really love this house. I think it's like perfect. Like the shape of it is cool and the room and what I did. I like this house. Going outside of the house, we have a wall. If I go up the staircase, we have a sugarcane farm. I don't like the sugarcane farm. It is not efficient enough. I need to build a bigger one. We're going to do that soon. Maybe. I don't know. This way is a villager that I am obsessed with. This is the best villager in this entire world right here. Axel Waddle. How you doing? How you doing? So sit down. Take a seat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no more waiting. Mending. One emerald right there. Check it out. Mending. One emerald right there. That's right. Two mending trays. This one knocked back too. That's trash kind of. But right there. Two mending. Two mending. Name tag. One emerald. Axel Waddle is no joke the best they own this whole world so axolotl has their own house right here with a doorbell but we don't ring it because it's rude like that and then uh hey look at that thing that's pretty sweet we should go over there all right so we have that bridge to axolotl's house next to this house of course uh or we have this option right here now i'm not gonna go down there i'm gonna go down there so we go down this long staircase it turns and then it keeps going down to my mine i haven't been down in the mines in a long time actually but it's the mines, uh, you know, like Y11, you go down and make the hallways, that type of thing. We have a minecart right here that we can send things up to the top in, like, like this. If I do that, hit the button, it's going to go up there. Bubble column right here to shortcut our way back up. And then up at the top of this thing, I have a minecart unloader. So basically, the minecart is going to be stopped. Everything's going to go into this chest. Then the minecart can leave again. Insanely compact and also insanely useful. But that's not the only thing in the mines nowadays. If we go over here up this ladder, we have a trap door. And then we have this opening right here. We close the trap door. We go down this bridge. And we can see the biggest build by far in this world. This thing is a monster. This is a temple on, I think it's like a 72 by 72 block platform. Yeah, big. It's got a path going up to it. And then uh, up here, it's 64 by 64 blocks. Gigantic pyramid up at the top of the pyramid. I actually haven't been here. Ooh. Hard no. Hard no. Top of the pyramid. There's a room, though. This thing can really only be taken in from the sky, though. So check this out. We fly into the air. It's big. It's a giant temple. It uh, definitely has a use. Don't worry about it. it. It's a big temple. And this is my favorite build of the world, probably. Honestly, it's just big and, and it's cool. And it was actually 
really fun to build. Is that weird to say? It was like an absurd amount of block placing, but I liked it, and I had fun, and honestly, considering doing another one, is that bad? Now, it's kind of hard to see because I, I made it blend in, but to get over there, we do have that thin bridge, and then that's it. That's all that there is over there that you can actually get to with the bridge. Over here, though, in front of the temple, we have the villager breeder. This thing is automatic. If I let it be automatic, I have it off right now because I don't want more villagers, but it's a villager breeder. The villagers go right there, do their thing. Uh, if I turn it on, then villagers will breed, and they'll be put right here. But I kind of have, like, an excess of villagers right now that I don't know what to do with, so I don't really use it. Over here... We have a building. Hey, would you look at this? There's a villager in here. It actually made its way in here basically on its own. A beautiful music disc right there. And right behind me, uh, a snowman. This is my snow farm building. I come here sometimes, not really, but it's for snow. So actually, when I said I don't have a use for the villagers, that was kind of a lie. Uh, the goal in this world is to get one of every single kind of villager and basically like give them their own building or house or something like that, depending on what we end up doing. Uh, we're like actually a little over halfway there, I think, uh, but we're not there quite yet. Uh, this is a farm. This is my worst farm in the world. Over here, we have the first crop farm in here. I have wheat growing here. I have potatoes there, carrots, beetroot back there, cow crusher in the middle. I get all of my food from there. And these are the OG bees that we imported from the flower forest. They're luxurious, but they also went extinct because of a bird. Over here, we have a bamboo farm. This is a monster, an absolute unit. What I do is I, I get bamboo from this farm, and then I put it in chests around this thing. And then whenever I have time... I go and turn this bamboo in, into sticks and sell them to our fisherman villager and basically just get a ton of emeralds. It's really, really cool, insanely useful, but I have way too much bamboo. Over here is a chicken farm that I don't use. I built it and it gets me a ton of eggs, which is really nice. I was going to make an automatic chicken cooker and then I didn't. I should probably do that soon, but yeah, it cranks out eggs like crazy. This is a clock tower. This thing is really cool. So this thing actually is functional. The lights on the clock tower turn on at nighttime as soon as you can sleep. So if I look over at the clock tower and the lights are on, that means I could sleep if I could find a bed and I wanted to. Up at the top of the clock tower, we have the dragon egg, and then we have old common to the day books. This is where I store the old ones that I'm not using anymore. I put them in here, in the chest, and the view, the view. You can see the temple from here. You can see the water over here. You can see all of these builds over here, which I actually haven't seen quite yet from this view. It's just everything. This view, this spot right here is like central. And it's so good. It looks amazing. And then, also, when you're done, you can just jump out of that window, land in the water. And that actually does it for the first island here, I think. Uh, like, this chunk of land. So then we cross this bridge and go over here. Villager house number one. This first villager house is Big Mike's house. Big Mike is cartographer. We're going to talk to the cartographer more soon. It's like your typical medieval house. You know, you got, like, a balcony over here that looks out there. Stay inside. You got another balcony over here for contemplating. And then up here, you have another room that... I I took the ladder out because the villager was being bad uh, and I never put back but it's a room you're just gonna have to trust me guys I, I don't feel like going and getting a ladder and going up there ignore all that for now we go over here we have another building this building is for the fisherman villager the fisherman villager is essentially worthless and useless not a good villager to have but we have to get every villager so I had to get it oh this next villager I could never disrespect that much this next villager is my most useful villager behind two fence gates the Fletcher Fletcher villager master level this trade right here this is the trade that I do all the time or this one right here now, before we do anything else, watch the boat. We built a boat in the center of this lake, and this boat has a redstone contraption in it. At nighttime, a firework is... Oh, because of the glass. Oh. I guess you can't see through the glass, but at nighttime, a firework is shot off into the sky. It's pretty sweet. I'll try and show you it later. The basement of this house gets even better, though. If we go down this basement, we actually have a farm down here, and the farm is tied to the villager. If I ever needed emerald, string, experience, spider eyes, you know, all that type of stuff, this is where I would go, because we have a spider spawner in there. The spiders move over here, and then I can stand right here and take them out with my sword. It's pretty simple. The spider's health isn't really brought down, which is unfortunate, but it's easy. All of the drops go into this chest right here and then I just take the drops upstairs and sell them or take the spider eye and do whatever I'm doing with the spider eye as a spider farm. For villager row though that's actually it. We have cartographer, fisher, fletcher right there and then dead end the hill. Now let's actually go back this way towards the water and go past these big fountains. We did this last episode. If you saw it you recognize it. Fountain right here. It's cool. We have the only map wall in this world right here. We're gonna build a big one soon but this is actually yeah the only map wall with basically everything in the jungle. 
Then, uh, keep walking around over here. Hey, we go down to the water. It's a nice view. That's the only beacon in the world. Sad, but true. Oh, the amazing poppy farm. This thing up there has been running for so long. And check this thing out. So much iron, but also poppies. Look at this. This thing actually is overflowing. That's kind of bad. I need to unload that, but poppy, poppy, poppy. Wait, poppy. Yeah, there is so much poppies from this thing. And also iron. But poppies, it's like so amazing. And also, look at the floor. The fog. The fog is like a purple chemical that I definitely shouldn't walk on. Oh, it's so sweet. Look at this. We're gonna get even more poppies right now. This is amazing. I need to empty this thing. Hold on. Yeah, so this farm is actually an original design and it cranks out iron like like crazy. Like, check this out. Stacks and stacks of iron blocks over here, which is crazy. And then I have even more inside of the storage building. Quite literally, because of this farm, I will never run out of iron. And it looks pretty good too. This is one of my favorite spots in this entire world. The only way out of this spot though is either gonna be the waterfall or the vines though. I, I wanted to keep it really natural. If we go back up here, then we we have this building right here we don't actually go inside of it there is no inside but there is an outside and on the outside of the pumpkins so this is the automatic pumpkin farm that has been running for so long i need to actually get like a farmer villager soon and sell these pumpkins because there are just so many pumpkins it is like absurd Right past the pumpkin farm, behind me, we have two farms. These are the nether tree farms, but also the nether plant farms. If I bone meal right there, nether plants grow. The floor moves if something grows in front of the observer. Then I can plant one of those mushrooms in the middle, grow it. And then I have all of these areas where I can walk around and, like, farm the things. They're pretty annoying to farm, to be honest, but the builds are cool looking. Outside past these buildings, a pretty new path that goes past this jail looking building over to this building right here, the cabin in the woods. This one is actually our zombie spawner farm building. Below this building, there's a zombie spawner. When you stand in certain parts of it, zombies drop in here. So there's a zombie spawner, like right down below this room. If I stand in here or even out there, the thing is actually active. Zombies go up. Uh, just like the other one, they fall down and they get really easy to take out. Then, right over here, we have a villager that buys the rotten flesh. Right across the road from there, we have a new building. I still need to work on the front of the thing. I never came back and fixed it. It looks weird, but inside of here, the villager conversion area. So what I can do is bring a villager in here. Uh, then I push the zombie and the villager together. The villager gets turned into a zombie villager. I heal the thing and the trades get discounted. If you didn't know, you can actually do this a couple times to discount the trade even more, which is what these markers are for. They're not actually really functional. They're just for marking how much discounting you've done and then uh broom sand not much else inside of this building hey look at those potions though that's perfect my favorite part about this building is definitely on the outside i love the waterfront like look at it we haven't done anything with the water yet we're gonna do that soonish at some point but the wheel I, I love that wheel we invented the wheel actually it's crazy sometimes if you're lucky you'll catch this thing actually turning in the water it actually increases the rates of that farm definitely uh hey look at that speaking of so for that corner that area of the world that is actually basically it kind of not really actually insanely incorrect over here we have the tree farm but the tree farm is really more like just three tree pads then we have an interdimensional staircase over there with the yeah so this tree farm is where i plant trees nowadays i i put dirt on top of these cool terracotta pads and grow the trees and then chop the trees down y you guys know how to farm tree over here though is a building that is actually unused but it's really cool so if we well actually i take that back it is used now this is the birdhouse the tree house the birdhouse here's marcus right there formerly known as mark we have bro right there and then up here we have jack jack likes to live life on the edge very edgy but yeah oh this is the first time that i've actually seen the temple from here look at it in like the fog yeah that thing is big it's like a tower it's like a pyramid so that's the treehouse actually initially i was planning on having the creeper farm which is right over there go into the treehouse like all of the drops uh land there the like creepers and stuff but then i ended up changing plans but speaking of the creeper farm we might as well go over here and talk about this thing this right here is a fully automatic creeper farm there's water spawning pads trap doors everything creepers actually fall out of the thing they just did they go to the magma block so they toast up and then all of the drops are put into a chest down below the thing speaking of the chest down below the thing here it is right now this is what we're looking at since we cleared it out last time it's actually not the best to be honest because i still have a lot of caves that I have to light up like the spawns are happening on the surface at nighttime 
Uh, and under the ground in the cave still it could be better so back out here we have the tree house we have the sheep farm right there it's good and then up here we have the cathedral the storage cathedral this is the main build of this world the centerpiece for sure so if we go over this way we have the front door it's a piston door it opens up then we go in here and we have a bunch of our bats in here this is a council of cats actually there's cash right there brand new beds brand new floor brand new chandeliers we did a bunch of work on this thing last episode and it's my favorite build of this world the coordinates of it right here just in case you're in the download oh my gosh I, I love this build this is my favorite storage building ever and it's insanely functional actually too it's very very easy to use I actually have a lot of extra space and then upstairs wait for it wait for it I have even more storage up here and my extra shulker boxes lined up I actually started using some of this stuff more recently but real quick let's take a break from that check the boat out so it's nighttime the sun is setting we have a custom made firework that launches out of the boat it doesn't launch up very high we should be able to catch it right here but it happens every time once it gets like a little bit late like past sleeping time i actually kind of use like the firework sound indicator like when it goes off it's like a reminder like hey it's getting pretty late my guy you should probably sleep or a creeper's gonna spawn on top of the cathedral and blow something up okay i just realized we're too far away from it it happened and and we missed it because we we're too far i'll try again so this storage building is an absolute monster. There's tons of extra storage up top. There's storage down here for a bunch of things. If you're curious, this is what the diamond count is looking like right now. Okay, yep, you saw it. Netherite count, you, you saw it. And then more importantly, the emerald count. That's pretty nice. Iron, check it out that right there we also have some other valuable things this is what we have right there this is what we have right there outside on this side of the building we have like a back exit a tragic incident happened last episode and yeah that's the storage building it's like a big place oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's right we have our extra set of armor over here it's netherite armor that's pretty decent uh that was the first set of netherite armor the stuff that we're wearing right now is the new set i usually wear the elytra but we do have a chest piece right here too this is a really really good set of armor it's actually like the best set of armor so storage building this is like the main place of this building it's like center i love this place it's cool then uh right here we have this cut through main door both sides we have pan out here pamela sitting then we have the panda exhibit the panda area where the pandas live i am trying to get every single panda type we have the rolling ones which are cool they're annoying we have this chicken one that always runs away we have a normal one that stands over here all the time and then angry aggressive pandas in here too which is pretty cool we're we're kind of like getting there i think we're like halfway there actually but we still need to work on it there's a secret door back here the pandas don't even know about it you go back here and it's the panda monorail to panda island panda island is actually where i um we'll say repopulate the the wild with uh pandas they're crawling all over the place they swim they live a good life i had a lot of fun building this place too i really want to bring more animals to the jungle and do this again because it's pretty sweet now up this grand staircase right here first we have banff hq this is the bee population area we have tons of bees in here actually nowhere near as many as i'm supposed to have by now i still need to repopulate but yeah bees they live in here they eat flowers they have a good life they're safe and they make me honeycombs at the same time, which is really nice. So it's a win-win for me, a win-win for them. Actually, now that I think about it, I haven't harvested this in a while or emptied it. Oh, it's overflowing. It's overflowing. We have so many honeycombs. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah, this thing isn't even at half capacity and it's a tank. This is a really good farm. Back outside of the BHQ, though, we have this other path over here that goes to the enchanting building. Now, uh, inside of the enchanting building, we have a couple different enchantment setups. We have a manual one right here with a pretty decent view of the world, or we have the spiral staircase. Now, I actually, like, never go up the spiral staircase anymore because there's really not much up here, but we have a spiral staircase that goes up the tower to another really good view. We can actually see the temple from here a little bit. This is the first time of me seeing that, and that, and that, kind of cool, and finally that, not cool at all. In the top of this thing, I was putting like random pieces of armor that I really didn't need. So we have a spot for like gold helmets and, and chest plates and yeah, just a bunch of things that I don't want to get rid of for whatever reason. Honestly, I don't know why, but I also just, just, uh, it, it's for hoarding. The main thing that I use in this building, though, is actually in the basement. If I go over here and go down, and then we have the main enchanting setup over here. It's toggleable, adjustable. This is where we built our armor set. This is where we're going to build the really good tools that we're going to do soon. And actually, as a bonus right here, a guide to all of the really, really good armor enchantments right here. Everything that I like to have, it just sits in this lectern. I'm going to move it later and put it in one of these chests. But yeah, enchanting area. So back outside past the bee thing, we're actually finishing up basically everything everything in this world going down this path over here we have the pig farm the pig farm is for pigs i don't like to hurt the pigs they just get to live here peacefully and then we have our local peasant 
uh, our local peasant H. So H is obsessed with sweet berries. They buy sweet berries for an amazing price right here. Uh, I haven't done it in a minute. Actually, should real quick. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This is despicable. I left a bunch of emeralds in here. Look at all these emeralds. I'm actually loaded, guys. So the plan is to get another butcher villager in here at some point and use it for selling sweet berries. Easy profit. Now the road actually kind of just dies out right here. I haven't actually worked in this area very much. There's still a lot to come over here, but over here, automatic sweet berry farm. It's box powered, and we have sweet berries right in there. I think this farm actually hasn't been running that long because it's like pretty far away from where we've been building. See, we've been building like way over there by the beacon beam. Hard to tell how far away it is, but it's pretty far away. Like this is a far corner of our world. The farm is pretty efficient. It just hasn't had time to run. But uh, over here, we have the path going over to H's house. And then right in here, our foxes import. So oh, over there, they sleep all day long. They don't do anything. They eat. Uh, they're they're adorable. They're amazing. This is where the foxes live. This thing is huge This is my biggest farm by far in this world And I'm gonna build more of these things because it's fun to build like gigantic sweet berry farm I'm highly considering converting one of these fields into like a massive melon farm or like a massive like wheat farm or carrots or, or just something like a big farm for for one of the things that we don't really have a big farm for you know uh, because the big sweet berry farm was pretty cool I'm kind of leaning towards a big wheat field because I have so many extra seeds But definitely let me know what you think like what should I do with with this giant plains biome over here? I have a couple ideas, but let me know down in the comments below. All right So we got all of those buildings sweet berry. I think the final thing actually yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure the final thing that I haven't showed you guys quite yet is right over here This is another pretty new thing. We got so lucky like not even trying to brag here But we got so lucky we found a skeleton spawner on this world. It's amazing And I just set up a skeleton farm the other episode all I have to do is stand in this room right here, which is actually open to the sky. I really like that. Uh, there's a skeleton spawner room right in there. They go up the elevator, they drop over, stand here, and I take them out. This thing is amazing. It's so good. Bone meal, bone blocks, yeah, open to the sky. But I do actually have to come back around on the top of the thing and do like maybe like white glass panes like floating around it so creepers can't just jump in here because that would be really, really bad. But look at it look at it i mean look at it so like i said skeletons they go up they fall down and then i can take them out easy just like that and then one of the things that makes this area so cool to me uh when i'm done i could just do my elytra and just fly right out of the thing and then check out everything in this world from the sky that's gonna do it for the tour and episode number 100 what do you think one one three three days in minecraft and this is what you get a world that kind of might end up looking like this right here of course it depends on what you end up doing but this is it the timing is kind of impeccable today we haven't seen the fireworks show quite yet so that's what we're going to end today's video with if i go right over to like probably like right here we're going to get like a really prime spot and there's no way i miss it this time like no way nothing could go wrong at all well while we went for that i just want to say thank you all so much for the support on this series it's been crazy it's like the most support that i've ever seen on any series like consistently so seriously thank you we would not be at this one in the series if it wasn't for each and every single one of you the series started back in september and and here we are now episode number 100 and a uh, good news if you like the series it's not over for sure nowhere there'll be a new episode in a couple days where we're gonna actually start doing some big farms and cool projects again but i, I just wanted to say thank you thank you all so much okay hold on hold hold on hold on hold on hold on why are the fireworks not going off like we had it perfect this time like literally like literally perfect and and it just didn't go out did i actually run out of fireworks there's no way there's no way i literally ran out of fireworks on this episode like no way i'm out of fireworks i'm completely out of fireworks do we seriously run out of fireworks on episode number 100 okay that is crazy that is not a coincidence that's crazy let me know what your favorite build has been so far down in the comments below you are now uh, approaching the final moments of this video to hit subscribe so highly consider that now and, and leaving a like on the video if you like the tour would appreciate it thanks for watching everybody it's been me your boy green hair i will see you tomorrow with another video 1000k day gang goodbye